This episode and every episode is brought to you by Attorney Mo DeWitt. If it's a slip and fall, guess what? Call Mo DeWitt. Just call Mo.com. You won't regret it. There's no attorney like Mo DeWitt in Central Florida, and I am a shining example of that. He's a huge supporter of the arts and everything local, anything Central Florida. He supports us. Please support him. Injured on the go? Just, Just call, call Mo. Mo. Just call Mo.com. We are back. Episode six. Yeah. We ride. We ride. It feels so good. Welcome back. My name is Ross. That's Joel Warren. Yo. That's Nico Renato. Oh, yeah. God, what a weekend. It really was. How's life been? I hope you are enjoying this journey of existence. Sometimes there's a lot of bumps. Other times, it's smooth sailing. Gotta tell you, I feel like my life is braille. Because a lot of bumps. You bumping? Uh, a lot of bumps. If My life right now uh, is going to like rehab. Because a lot of bumps. A lot of bumps. Yeah. Some good bumps. Uh, That's as an outside observer. Li- life has got acne. A lot of bumps. Your life is reading braille. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what it is. It's just... Reading Braille, there's definitely bumps, but my yeah, God. Your, your, your life is a, a really rich neighborhood. There's lots of bumps. Uh, this you is, can't drive fast in <laughs> yeah, your life right now. I, just so many speed bumps. There's uh, and I, so, What's your least favorite kind of speed bump, N- literally? Um, I don't like the tabletop ones. Yeah. The tabletop ones make me get overzealous. They're arrogant. And I'm like, oh, I can do that. No, that's not going to... I can hit it a little bit faster. Bad idea. And plus, at that top, you always just want to do a kickflip. Yeah, yeah. And you can't. No, not... You can't kickflip in your Honda, man. I can't kickflip, period. Tough. So, life. Smooth sailing at sometimes bumps. And that's everyone's life. Uh, this is back-to-back weekends uh, that I flew to Atlanta... And this is a first. Was it like a BOGO thing? No, it was the first time was for a comedy festival. The second time was for a wedding. And when I showed up, this now the second time in Atlanta, it's like two in the morning. I get to my hotel and they don't even look up my name in the computer system because they just have to tell me there's no room. We have no room for you at all. Like uh, Mary and Joseph. Yeah, I got Mary and Joseph. Man. Wait, and you reserved the room before? Like, it wasn't, you just showed up and you said, but you. I had the confirmation it? number. I had the email. I had everything. And they were just like, no. Nah. Yeah, we got rid of that one a minute ago. Couldn't believe it. What a bummer. That is. How? I, why would they do that? I got betrayed. They thought you weren't going to come because it was like 2 a.m. I, the whole, I guess the entire hotel was booked. And it was like two in the morning, one thirty when I got there. So then I had to go sleep on the floor of the my one friend's apartment. It was uh, it was a hell of a weekend. Wow! But that's the bumpy side. The smooth sailing side is that you and I are having a blast at the Orlando Fringe Theater Festival. That is true. And it's been... I was trying to mask my joy when you were talking about your bumpy life. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm having my, fun right now. My herpes life? Yeah. A lot of bumps. A <laughs> lot of bumps. Is that too disgusting? Uh, it's too late. I go back to your smooth sailing life. Tell me how much better it's gone for you. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's great. It's I so much, much love fun. it. Uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, but mo- a lot of... Right now, it's fun because we're doing the Fringe Festival, and it's going really well, and we're having fun, and people are showing up and seeing our show. Yeah. Um, it's we, a blast. Uh, we have a show. It's called 10 Sketches, and we wrote 10 Sketches, and it's been a blast. We got a great review from Matt Palm over at the Orlando Sentinel. Also, take a moment. Go subscribe to the Orlando Sentinel. Support your local journalism the fact that the Orlando Sentinel has a presence at this theater festival just a big one is such a and it's a, a very important one. Uh, yeah, very important. That guy goes and sees. I I don't know what his total was. We we had him 
He was a guest on the uh, Tonight at Midnight show. We did a bunch yeah. at the Fringe. And I, I don't remember if we got a number of shows out of him, of how many during one of these festivals he sees. But I got to say, when he saw our show, which was at our first performance, in the review it said he'd seen 36 shows already. Yeah, it's the second it's or insane. third day of the festival. It's Matt Palm is... Putting in work. Putting in the work. Uh, and so is the Orlando Sentinel. I can't say better things about local newspapers and local journalism that I have definitely uh, learned to appreciate. And there are also shout out to Seth Kabrisky from oh, Orlando Weekly, who yeah. we also love too. He's also doing the exact same thing. They, they, they've, and they've been doing it for years. Those two are, uh, this is playoff season for them. And, and if you're listening to this right now and you're like, man, I still don't know what a French festival is. There is still time. I took my, um, I mean, you know this, you were there, but I took my younger son last night to the Fringe. That you did. And he looked at me and he said, is this my first Fringe show? And I was like, oddly enough, no, you were like two years old. Yeah. <laughs> You've and, been in a couple probably. And then I remembered another one. When he was four, he saw your brother's Fringe show. And I was just remembering all the, and they grew up there. But anyway, he he blocked all that out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Therapy's made him forget all that. But uh, we took him to the show last night. He had a blast. And the other fun part was he gets a little culture, gets to see a sketch show, gets to be in a room full of people laughing and having a good time. Uh, and afterwards, there's food trucks. He got mini donuts and cheese curds. That's that's a good night. That's a good night. And a an ice cold Coca Cola. Oh, man. Come on now. You have to get the cheese curds there. It's a must. There's a bunch of good stuff. <laughs> Renato's. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Give me a gong. Yeah, yeah. Gong it. Gong hit. What's up, Renato? <clears throat> what's up, Joel? No, what's um, your you've curd? earned this gong, so go ahead. And yep. uh, what's your hot take? Say your cheese curd take. Uh, Every time I go to the Fringe Festival, I get the cheese curds. And every time it's a vibe and every time I enjoy it. So I highly recommend you get the cheese curds when you go to the Orlando French Festival. Boom. And I'm going to say, so far, I know two things. If you go to the Fringe, you have to get the cheese curds. That's according to a source that I trust very much. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the Fringe, you have to see 10 sketches. That's according to Matt Palm of the Orlando Sentinel. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yes. Uh, also, those are the two, two gong hits I've heard so far. Yeah, yeah. Gong me. Gong it. Yeah, let's see. See, yeah, I like that, dude. We gotta start ripping we gongs. Gotta start the, ripping gongs. Let's dude. start ripping gongs. <laughs> we're we're a pro gong show. <laughs> I love the fact that we have a gong just on the on the hit. I like that the first ever gong hit was about cheese curds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gong hit cheese it's appropriate. Curds. That's what's up. Uh, we're we're trying to write a legacy. One thing that I absolutely wanted to talk to you guys about because this was I've never seen somebody get arrested and become so much cooler overnight within forty five minutes. Okay. All right. Explain. Scotty Scheffler. Oh, he's a professional <laughs> golfer, and trust me, I don't want to even. Two weeks ago, I would have never talked about this white bread. Just, he is so bland until he got arrested. It's vanilla. And now I am a fan. I'm a huge fan of Scotty Scheffler. Really? He oh. gave you the street cred he needed. I right? needed I needed the juxtaposition. I needed the contrast. I wanted to see if he had a little bit of dog in him. And every interview, he's a professional golfer. You're kind of supposed to be boring. You're supposed to be checkers and not chess. I don't know. Even though golf, whatever. That's a yeah. hot take on yeah. checkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gong me. Gong me. <laughs> <laughs> Golf is more checkers. Golfers are more checkers than chess. Uh, yeah, I hit the ball. It was a good round out there. Come, God, dude, they don't... I don't know. More more golfers than not are just straight boring. Snooze. And Scotty Scheffler was the peak. He's the Mount Everest of just Snorlaxville. He is so toast. No jam, no butter, lightly toasted. And he's only lightly toasted because he plays golf and it's a tan. <laughs> yeah, all right. He gets arrested. I may I I love it. I love it. I'm thank well, God. What Scotty. do you love so much? Is it the crime? Well, I I honestly I think all this the is how I, I I here's my awareness of what you're talking about. He was trying to get into a golf tournament. It was blocked off because there was 
an accident. Somebody got killed, I think. Yep. And Middle then, accident. Oh, someone got killed? That's Scotty why Scheffler killed someone? No. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, no. Sorry. My bad. My bad. That is a gong rip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, allegedly. No. Uh, I think he was just trying to get in, but that's why the entrance was blocked off. And then a cop was like, hey, don't go there. And he was like, I got to go there. I'm a golfer. And then the cop jumped on the front of his car and like they rode together for a minute. And then he jumped off and then he got like four felonies. Yeah. Like, according that to that was it. Like the cops fine, but I think he I think he rode the hood a bit. Yeah, according to the police report that he filed, uh he was dragged by Scotty's car for about ten feet. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh suffering like abrasions. Uh abrasions. Abrasions. Uh suffered pain, swelling, and abrasions to his left wrist and knee and was transported to the hospital for further medical treatment. Also, he says that his uniform pants valued at eighty dollars were damaged beyond repair. Oh, those are dickies. Those He's, are expensive. They said that? He dropped that's in, in the, the police report. Yeah. The yeah. eighty dollar pair of pants? Yeah. All right, first of all, the police department is getting ripped off. Those are not $80 pants. Yeah, you can get a three-pack on Amazon Essentials for like $36. What are you doing? They're, they aren't. And I think it says it, standard issue cop pants. Second of all, <laughs> I hope that police officer is fine. Yeah, and but let's, his let's, left wrist is a little sore. But I'll be honest with you, regard, <laughs> regardless, I am, if Scotty Scheffler beat me in any physical altercation, I'm a... I'm a little embarrassed. I hope he's okay. I well, hope he he's didn't. okay. He ran a car into him. Yeah, but even then. That's not a physical. I mean, his he used his wrist to turn the steering wheel <laughs> of the car that hurt the cop's wrist. I just don't understand how Scotty Scheffler just went straight goblin mode on a police officer <laughs> at a major well, golf tournament. Well, there's two sides to the story. <laughs> I just like that. That cop, that cop brought $80 pants to a car fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's insane i like i hope everyone's okay let's get the, all the cold takes out of the way now that's out of the way this is hilarious oh also the whole thing there was an espn guy like five feet away that watched the whole thing and scheffler looks at him and goes can you help me right there's while two, he's getting arrested there's two sides of the story so uh espn <laughs> reporter jeff darlington was on the scene describes he witnessed scotty drive about 10 yards right he rolled down his window to talk to... I like that detective. he put it in football terms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and golf. All right. It was a good 30 feet away. It was breaking right to it was breaking. He was, he was away <laughs> from me. He didn't get him on the green or anything. <laughs> but uh, when Scotty rolled down his window, they exchanged a few words. At that point, the detective pulled him out of the car, pushed him against the car, handcuffed him, and then uh, he went to jail. Scotty... Uh, was taken to the Louisville Metro Department of Corrections, is charged with second-degree assault to a police officer, third-degree criminal mischief, reckless driving, and disregarding traffic signals. There you go, Scotty Youngblood Scheffler, dude. He's got a rap sheet now. He's got, he's got a rap sheet. He's got a mug <laughs> shot. I, I, it's hilarious. And he still made his tea time. It's And he birdies hole one? Yeah. What a G. What a G. Yeah. What do we have a sound effect only for uh Scotty Scheffler? Um, not yet. Will you take a gong rip? God man. Are yeah, you trying to rip a gong? Yeah, rip a gong. Keep there. Scotty Scheffler is the greatest arrest of all time. Mm. I it's the most entertaining. It's the most unexpected. It's the funniest. I hope everyone's okay. But he is that is hilarious. I can't think of a funnier arrest. Than Scotty Scheffler, no one. So that's an I see dead people twist. <laughs> that's that's the top. It, it keeps spinning, but wobbles a little bit. Twist. That's the. Were you shocked when you heard this? Oh, I started laughing. I shocked. Uh, what? I saw the mug shot. It happened so early in the morning. It's at a major golf tournament. He is the most famous golfer. <laughs> yeah, he's number one. I didn't believe it till I saw it on ESPN. And I was like, this is actually a, a thing. He actually got arrested. And they weren't even speculating. They were at it. The, no, they, they were, were like, there. legit, we were here. That happened. <laughs> like the pastor's kid got in trouble, dude. It's like the pastor, it, yeah. you saw the pastor's kid smoking weed. You know, that's what it yeah. feels like underneath like the bleachers. I'm like, oh, you saw the pastor's kid. And he arrested. did it on a Saturday night and was at church on Sunday. And everyone was just pointing at him like, oh, yeah, no oh. one's perfect there, Scotty. No one. Can he vote? Is it a felon? 
Felony? Well, only if he's convicted. Oh, yeah, okay. so I th- I believe his arraignment is happening. I got details on how all this works. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. If you're in trouble, call me, Ross. Yeah, yeah call Mo. But the truth will come also, out. Also, Mo. Like, like, a different kind of crime. Di- 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 different. If yeah, you get yeah. into a car accident, call Mo. Call if Mo. you're in jail for other stuff, call me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to get into your uh, golf tournament and there's a bunch of cars blocking and some guy pulls you, puts you across the car. Just call Joel. Yeah, just call Joel. <laughs> it's, it's a really long advertisement on a bench. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like very specific. It's very specific. I've told my kids that before. I was like, hey, all right, here's the deal. If you ever get arrested, I understand things happen. You know, just be very quick to call me. Yeah. Call me immediately. And and you don't need to tell me everything. You just need to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> right. Don't yeah. say anything. You have the right to remain silent <laughs> yeah. from me and i will from get me. the correct lawyer there <laughs> we'll, we'll fix it it will be like a character from svu <laughs> right right it will be someone with slick back hair i will hire ice tea and we will get you out of this situation <laughs> it'll be like that's messed up yeah <laughs> that's what the wolf was in pulp fiction he was a cleaner upper messer cleaner upper I'm so happy yeah. that, uh, yeah, I'm genuinely happy that Scotty Scheffler got arrested. Scotty Scheffler got arrested before I have. Yeah. Like, I feel less cool now. I, I Those still, odds are... I'm always terrified, though, of police officers. I, lo- I am so happy that they are, I've been on the best side of police officers my entire life, yep. and I want to keep it that way, but I'm still so scared. Well, yeah. No, yeah, they're... Yeah, they're intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They walk around and you're like, oh, oh, oh. They're like sharks. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. either be on your good side or your bad side. But like, it's like I great. want to respect you and I think you're a beautiful creature. But yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'd also want. be <laughs> way better if I couldn't see you. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're there. I know you're there. This but I don't. Like, I, this is how submissive I am towards police officers. If they walked up to me and they were like, I have bunions, I would be like, <laughs> take off the boots, give me some ointment. Give me some lotion. Let's get let's get to trying to oil up a bunion to get out of jail. I'm just saying I would. I would absolutely oil up a bunion to get out of jail. <laughs> That's I it's knew nice I was to know where you're I where knew you're... I was gonna say that today. I just <laughs> <laughs> was that your daily affirmation and you just didn't know how it applied? It was my zodiac little calendar yeah, card. Calendar of the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I am just You I'll, should come out with one of those cuz I think the things you would put on there, I think it would ca- a lot of people would it would brighten their day. I am I would, oh, you'd oil up a bunion today. I am such a bitch when it comes to police officers. Whatever, whatever you want, whatever you, whatever you whatever you need. Right. <laughs> What's your opener if they come if they pull you over and, and you would roll the window down? What do you say first? Uh Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, I, I think I hit him with a hello. 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 I don't know. What do you guys say? Uh, good evening, officer. Not a good interaction. It's such a, a it's just an intense. I, I think police officers for like when they are like 10 years into it, uh, I kind of feel like the, it's how could they experience what we're going through? Like they, they, that's so foreign where it's two foreign worlds, right? Like when was the last time a police officer got pulled over and got the same exact, I I know that there was one instance not too long ago where a police officer pulled over a police officer and a police officer was held to justice. That was cool. Are you talking Uh, about the golf cart in Tampa? No, I think. Do you know about that one? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, that was like a chief. There are, yeah, there are plenty of times when that happens. And but that, I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just don't think police officers won't. It, it's there's two different kind, two different uh, roles in society. I can't do what you can do, and uh, you have an experience getting uh, being this plebeian on a highway in quite some time. Mm-hmm. I'm always just not worried about it. I've had some pretty mm-hmm. decent interactions with the cop. I'm like, how's it going? That's usually how I get going. There, There is one time I, I always... Usually, you know what? Nine times out of ten, they're like, did you know your taillight's out? I'm like, oh, I didn't. And they're like, yeah. all right. And I know that that's like, and it must be nice to be me, but like, that's mostly, honestly, what's happened. I, and I and I have friends who obviously have had much more traumatic, you know, roadside cop interactions, but... 
I, I don't know. I think we've talked about this already on the pod, but like I will never forget. I was incredibly scared of police officers, and then I was incredibly uh, n- needing of police officers and a handful yeah. of times in my life. Absolutely. And, and it's such a weird dichotomy of like, oh, I'm terrified of you, but I love that you exist. I appreciate how I know how... I don't know, but your job from what I've seen from the outside looking in is wildly just hard, difficult. I saw when I saw I saw a guy get shot at a gas station. And when I was there, everything was just it was may it was chaos until all of a sudden I looked at the gas station wall and you saw like red and blue lights slowly get stronger and stronger and I look to the left and there's police officers action movie coming in, running out of the car, gauzing up this guy. You got You're sh- like, hello. Yeah, yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wasn't I was I'll tell you one thing for sure. I was not scared of the police officers. And at that moment, I was happy to see him. Oh, man, was I happy to see him. Everyone was mm. all of a sudden mom and dad were there. It was that vibe, and I've never seen. I mean, there's probably like 15 people at this gas station, nah, 10, 12, and uh, everyone. <laughs> there was a blood curdling scream from a woman. There it was, it was, but that's wild. like the time to bust that out if you have one. It, See somebody get shot. That's a great time to blood curdle scream. It was as <laughs> it was as movie esque. I, I as can't a, blood curdle scream, so like I don't have that. It was as, all I've got is like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dude, bomber, <laughs> Let, dude, that, you got shot. That sucks. Whoa. Yeah, all I have is like Bill and Ted exclamations. <laughs> we need to take a quick break from conversation so I can tell you about. The History Center. The History Center that makes its home in downtown Orlando in that majestic historic courthouse. The History Center that has four floors that covers 16,000 years of history. The History Center that has my favorite exhibit probably ever. The exhibit that covers the 1994 FIFA World Cup because that World Cup, we had some games in Orlando. So this whole exhibit just celebrates the love affair that the city beautiful has with the beautiful game. Yeah. That History Center, the Orange County Regional History Center, and you can get more information at thehistorycenter.org. Do it. Support your local museums. I still have yet to name my child. How is he? Four, five? Months, fetus, (laughs) a five-month-old fetus, six-month-old fetus. Don't know how. I have no idea. I do have an idea. There is a front runner. But Scotty, yeah, no, yeah, now it's Scotty, right? You got to name him after the you know what, though. I never, I never had that name judgment on Scotty Pippen. No, Uh, Scotty Pippen to me, I'm like, yeah, Scotty Pippen, he He, pulled off Scotty, he does pull that off, but he's like 6'8 and a playoff legend. That'll help. Your name could be anything, and that's cooler now. That's like getting arrested at a golf tournament. How <laughs> instant street cred, uh, Joel? You're the only one here uh, in this room that have has named another human being, mm-hmm. and if I may add, successfully. Yeah, they didn't change it. They've uh, they've both kept their names. Yeah, but they're good names. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, what? Do, do, were were there any other close call other names? Like, talk to me through if there was a, a three trilogy book. On that experience, what would be the titles of like coming to grips yeah. with like, all right, I like this vibe of a name because I'm I'm really overthinking naming another human being. It's probably the biggest responsibility thus far in my life. Like I think that's maybe I'm putting too much importance on naming my child. I but. don't think that's true. I think that's a big deal. So good for you. But you're also not like forcing anything. You know, you're it, you do have nine months to wait, and you it doesn't matter until 
your baby is born what its name is honestly right. it doesn't matter until the day it shows up and somebody's like which what's his name well, <laughs> and then it then it would be nice to have something to call him but you can think about it there's one there's one thing that my wife said and she's here she may hear this i also this is being recorded so and she's yeah more loves, than just she will hear this she also loves to support me we're so. all friends here this is private this doesn't leave this room <laughs> at all um I thought and she said something. I was like, "Whoa, do I disagree with that about naming the kid?" One of the one of the names. So, yeah, not not just threw one of the names. Out of name. No, the method. There's a there's a method. I'm I'm like I thought we just like name whatever we like phonetically, uh, but she told me that we have once the child is there, we basically have like the rest of the day or 24 hours to name the kid, and now we have some names. Uh, that we like and if she looks at the baby and goes no that's not an Aaron that's not even one of the names I'm keeping those close to the chest yeah but uh, it's not an Aaron it's not a Benjamin it's not a Christopher I didn't mean for that to be an alphabetical order but that definitely just happened that was ABC <laughs> um, I'm starting to see what you're doing here yeah 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 <laughs> but she wants to hold the baby and confirm with eye contact that that's its name. I think it's more of a vibe thing. Vibe check. Yeah, that's what she was throwing She's, at me. Like I can see that. That's smart. Is, I like is that. it like? I I don't know. I just Do you want to know something insane that I just thought of right now. I so <laughs> when I was going to be born, they thought I was going to be a girl. Until and, when? Until I was like, what's I'm here. Up? Oh my god, how'd that happen? And they had picked a name for a girl. And guess what it was? Jolene. The weirdest possible <laughs> choice for what my name could have been right now. No. Olivia. Oh, that is weird. My parents thought they were having a daughter named Olivia. And now they've got, you know. So in an alternate universe, there's an Olivia. That's In an you. alternate universe, I'm your wife. Hit me with a gong. <laughs> I'm your wife, Ross. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, that's true. They didn't know. So then they really, like, they they were in the moment, game seven, it's a boy, we got to think of a name. Yeah. They nailed that. Well, I mean, if you like my name, they did. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I do. Yeah, I never yeah, changed yeah. it. It's a good name. But I'm sure somebody was like, ooh, that does seem like a buzzer beater. You never, yeah, they, they came in They just hot. pulled that out of nothing. Did you, did they, uh, did you, you never got teased or anything for your name, right? Yeah, no, I did. With what? Um, I would get Joe, uh, no, it's not teased, but people would call me Joel a lot. Uh, Joey. Um, a lot of people call me Joe. Also, my last name is a first name. So sometimes when it's sports and things, they'd be like, Warren Joel. I just get called <laughs> Warren a lot. And I'm like, that's my last name. And they're like, you, you got two first ones. How am I supposed to know? I'm like, I don't. I'm nine. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just trying to survive. <laughs> yeah. I've, so no, it wasn't that bad. It's kind of like when I say I got pulled over. I'm like, I got pulled over and it went pretty good. <laughs> like, <laughs> Did you get uh, teased? I didn't personally get teased, but there was a kid. So my name is Nico, right? There was a kid named Rico that sat at the same lunch table. <laughs> you guys ever think of teaming up and becoming a duo? I was, I, I mean, I wouldn't mind it. I would have yeah, been on board. Nico, Nico and Rico. Joe? Or Rico, Rico and we Nico. We could have been a dynamic duo and conquered the world, you know. <laughs> or at least released a couple of albums. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah a few albums I together. mean, a magic show, something. Yeah, <laughs> uh, tennis. You could have played doubles. Yeah, Nico and Rico. Yeah, that it sells that sounds like a Nickelodeon show where, yeah. they're, where they're trying to get playfully ethnic, but not too much. <laughs> I wish I ha I would have had that broad of a uh, of a uh, outlook on life at that age. It was uh, yeah. early uh, sixth grade. I remember sixth grade. Oh yeah, the sweet spot. And they would call him Rico Frico from Puerto Rico, and I knew my name was Nico, so I didn't want them to call me Nico Frico from Puerto Rico, even though I'm not Puerto Rican. So I just told my mom to just, no more Nico, call me Nick. Whoa. Really? Wait, what's your, 
What? What? You didn't? You whitened your name? Yeah. You bleached your name for sixth grade? That's middle school pressure at its peak. Yeah. That's about as. It, I look I, back on it and I regret it. You know what you should have done? Should have just should have been stood, like, Mom, call tall. me Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What I don't understand. I'm trying to kiss like. There is also some deep sadness in that. I will also say there there is deep that sadness sucks that you didn't get to be Nico till you were a grown man. You're a great Nico. Yeah, yeah. Also. And then when I yeah when I grew up, I was like, you know what? That's stupid and wrong. <laughs> well, what I just don't and I'm Nico. I'm am Frico Nico, and I should visit Puerto Rico, <laughs> where I'm not from. So I just uh, when you heard first of all, was, Re- was Rico from Puerto Rico? I'm not sure. I didn't spend too much time in that school. He was sat at my lunch table, so it wasn't like I did. I didn't know too much about it. I just I saw from afar that that's how they rolled at this school. That they would. Yeah, they that's also like- made all the ecos sit at the same table. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, hey, go sit at the ecosystem over there. <laughs> they got at the, eco- the ecosystem. You freako. <laughs> yeah, put them in the freako ecosystem. I, I just don't understand. The new kid Chico will be there in a minute. Like, uh, you know, like I get it. Six, <laughs> sixth grade brain is like, you know, it's still growing. But I just don't understand the, like, em- the em- were you immediately paranoid that they're like, oh, God, my name rhymes with that. I'm in trouble. I can't remember if I was immediately like this can't happen, or if I let it let it simmer. You did really jump in there to control the narrative. Yeah, you went. Oh God, no! My name's Nick. Yeah, I, yeah, I got to yeah. get ahead of this. <laughs> I got to get ahead of this. I got to get ahead of this. My branding is already out of whack. <laughs> yeah, I'm in sixth grade. I'm here for three years. That's no. what I'm saying. Like <laughs> defense wins championships. Moms, call me Nick. Later. <laughs> I gotta go. Who? Who? You saw that? You saw that possibly in the future, and you just completely nipped it before. Any Nico Frico from Puerto Rico. I think it was a subconscious thought because of I moved so many times throughout, like uh, growing up. I had a, I went from school to school, right? Um, this is no not a problem. It happens, you yeah. know, from time to time. But um, but yeah, I would just saw that that's how that's that's what happens here at this school. You read the vibe. It was I like re- yeah. it's like when Ross has to name his kid. I got a name. You, my looked, kid. In the, you yeah. looked in the eyes of that student body and you went. Not today. Not today. Yeah, no. Call no me way. Nick. There's no way I'm throwing up my defense, and uh, we're just gonna move. And on. that's when they started calling him "What the frick, Nick?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't backfired. <laughs> the only time that I I don't know I think I learned a lot about myself at sixth sixth grade, dude. When you when you hit that sixth grade and you go from like multiple classes, now you're dealing with like five or five hundred percent more. Uh, Student interaction. Student interaction, which is also... Various teacher vibes. Human interaction, teacher interaction. That's like, it is going hard, man. Commute times from classes. In middle school, what a leap. That is a light year leap when it comes to just relationship with society looking back on it. And all of a sudden, you're going from being the oldest kid in a school to being at a school where adults go to school now. Yeah, yeah. You're like... Eighth grade has mustaches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I think I remember eighth grade has mustaches. All the seventh grade girls are a foot taller than the boys. Yeah. And <laughs> There's then, a 60% chance of boobs at all time. And then this place is crazy. Yeah. For, for sixth grade, for me, I was in a private school from first to fifth. And then I jumped to public school also in sixth grade. So I felt like I was in jail. I felt like I was like, Gen oh, pop. I was so yeah. I felt I, it was so wild. I was. They're like, here's the yard. Good luck. And uh, I thought, I guess I was just weird enough and sheltered enough, but I still defend it. I was a huge SpongeBob fan. Okay. Oh yeah. And I was always. I probably had like twelve SpongeBob T-shirts. I just thought it was so funny. I at at you repped. I repped, and I think I even stopped watching SpongeBob, but I kept wearing the shirts because mm-hmm. I thought the shirts were cool. Uh-huh. It was part of your brand. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that it's a big part of your brand. And you do get a brand in middle school, and everyone started yeah. calling me SpongeBob. And then I, and I, I guess I, I don't know, I maybe at that time I definitely had some SpongeBob vibes. The you might still, but SpongeBob rips. He had a good f- friend, Patrick. Is that me? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll take it. If Is you that are the starfish, I, I, 
I think uh Patrick. Hey, SpongeBob. Dude, oh, Patrick. I could see that. I could see that. Right? Like if you did like a Halloween kind of get up. Yeah, like yeah. Patrick, it could work. SpongeBob is like uh he oh, is a we'll go as a couple on Halloween. I was almost your wife after all. <laughs> SpongeBob is a millennial god. Yeah. And so is Scotty Scheffler now. And so is Scotty Pippen. Yeah, shout out to Scotty Pippen too. Even though he had a... Yeah, yeah. He'll be with us after this break. Yeah, absolutely. Little word from our sponsors, uh, BRB. Jay kidding. Ross. Joel. I want to have a beer. Where are we going? Half Barrel Beer Project, baby. This is such a cool bar, perfectly located around the theme parks. First of all, their food is amazing. That I'll stand by this. Go spend 12 bucks and find me three bigger sliders. They also have some of the best beer that is on this planet. But I think they won't be offended. They're beer nerds. They're beer nerds. Halfbarrelproject.com. Half Barrel Beer Project, your new local pub. Oh, yeah. We're back. Hell, yeah. Feels good. Feels like we just got out of a steam room. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That was a good Your lick. pores open? My pores are open. I was thinking about this. You ever been to uh, like yeah, yeah. a steam room or a spa? Yeah, spa, that's what I mean. Have you ever done like a spa day? I have spawed incorrectly every time I have gone to a spa. I don't know what I'm doing. How do you do it wrong? I... have I, all right. So first of all, it was a. Uh, I was supposed to be naked. At where? What, what kind? All right. Kind? I was. <laughs> was this in South Florida? I, I think I just jumped to like page forty-eight in the story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, nudity is a part of spas. Oh, yeah. Pretty quickly, they're like go in there and get dressed to your comfort level, and I'm like, I need way more specificity than that. <laughs> uh, gong me, gong me. Definitive statement. Oh, God. Couple massages, no bueno. No bueno. Don't ever. Oh, couples massages. Couple massages. No bueno. I, it's, I, couple massages are on the no bueno train. Whoa. Why? There's no point. I, I, you're you're getting massaged. A... Your eyes are closed. You're not talking. They're just in the room with you. And for me, specifically, it was kind of weird because, like, my, listen, my massage person wasn't the ugliest person in the world and now i've got like you know a pretty attractive massage therapist out in hawaii this was on our honeymoon yeah massaging me my wife's right next to me and i'm i kind of like having to play the card of like oh yeah that, that, that was, was terrible that was not uh, you're so much better <laughs> <laughs> like i'm not you were doing to... that during it <laughs> no afterwards I'm like, you're like this ah, sucks she's ugly yeah <laughs> while while like Later, we've talked about this later. This is a, we've t I've got this out of the way, but like, it was a thing, and I'm naked. I didn't even know I was supposed to be naked, so I showed up with swim trunks soaking wet. <laughs> I like I I was supposed fresh I from the pool. Yeah, from a jacuzzi. Yeah, I think it was a jacuzzi. I was just jacuzzing, and I had no idea that I was supposed to be naked and dry, and then the table was soaked. Oh no! The, she she massaged. I'll be honest with you, man. It was just a little. It was a little weird. Was the how many massages have you had that were not couple massages? Multiple, probably like seven, six, six so or seven. It wasn't like this was the first time you've had a massage. But not a nude one. Usually, it's like, oh, cool. I'm out of Whole Foods. What? And there's like somebody just chilling. Throwing massage. Oh, but you've out. never been to one of the ones where you go in a room and they're like, get under that towel. We'll yeah, back yeah. In a minute. I haven't, I've been to a massage NV, I think, once. And then this time was like mad intense. I felt like, you know, something nefarious was happening on my honeymoon directly in front of my wife. <laughs> yeah. You thought you had crossed into a whole new level. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, my brain didn't, but my body did a little bit. You're like, we do this. Like, hey, my body's like, if you touch this, <laughs> this, this way, things are going to react. And my, you see what I'm saying? My wife's like four feet next to me. And yeah. then my wife got like this, uh, this, just this old homely woman. And at that time, I'm kind of like, give me the old, right. give, give me can the switch. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, can You're we? Like, could you have your mom come rub me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> It would have been far more comfortable if I had a less uh, attractive woman massaging me in front of my wife. You know you can put on the 
the request form things like i like a firmer touch and you'd be like i'd like a shrek like yeah yeah person. give me an ogre <laughs> yeah could you please give someone it. from the swamp for me yeah, give me a both for strength and look give me a helga dude give me, give me i want you know you can ask for a guy too i i want yes something other than i mean i i remember her nails she had like really nice nails i was like oh man <laughs> See, this is <laughs> on your honeymoon. On, on my honeymoon, she had nice nails. Everything was it was just a couple of massages, no bueno. We live in Orlando. Okay. That's, it's kind of like being in a spa six months out of the year, anyway. A lot of spa. Vibes. You go outside and your pores are like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's coming, by the way, man. That Florida heat is on its way. Florida will be making its return any day now. It's the hibernation's over. It this is the half a year where it feels like you're inside a Labrador's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's not morning dew. The earth is sweating. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is, dude. That's earth perspiration. Yeah, it's tough, man. Uh where per. per. I I as soon as I said it, it was perspiration. You know, I like to point out everything you do. Yeah, wrong but I, I hit time. it with that pre what what are we doing here? That sounds like a denomination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's perspirational. It's perspirational. It's the first perspiration. Uh yeah, I I wouldn't. I maybe I might go I get a massage today. You ever been to a chiropractor? No, I'm curious about. Oh, that. Oh, let's do that. Let's nah. all go get cracked. Whoa, that's where I draw the line. Gong, gong hit. Yeah, gong it. I'll go to the chiropractor, but they're not touching my neck. Oh. oh. F that. I used to watch my mom. no necko for Nico. <laughs> I used to watch my mom get it done and just cry my eyes out because you thought <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were watching them Your kill her. Mom, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it was mom, traumatizing. Mom. That's so. You thought it was like an interrogation. <laughs> like, like a, yeah, a straight torture chamber. Where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the money? Where is he? <laughs> what? What? How old? Ah man, sub ten. Yeah, sub ten. No, that's a great way to say it. <laughs> yeah, Single digit. I I had one of those ditch, moments. Dude. I remember one time I was a uh, sub ten. Sub ten sub is 10. a wild time of life, man. <laughs> is, you yeah, don't yeah. know anything. That's how I feel now. Is I'm just like sub forty three. <laughs> sub forty three in it. Sub sub forty three. Uh, I remember I walked in. My mom was taking a bath, and. Okay, already weird. Yeah, yeah. She was walking. She, <laughs> she was taking a bath. I was nosy, man. I was. I was a. I was just surprising everybody. Yeah, yeah. I was again. I was like, ha ha. I was a tumbleweed of a child. Sounds like you, <laughs> just yeah. going anywhere. Sounds like it. And I remember putting my hand. Were you wearing a SpongeBob shirt? At the time? <laughs> Might may have. Uh, I put my hand <laughs> underneath the bathroom faucet, and it was so hot. Or may you know what it was? She was drawing a bath. And I touched her bath water, and it sizzled you. And it was so hot, and I was like, "Mom, you cannot go in there." Oh, oh, I see. And then she went into the bathtub, and that's when I started crying my brains out. I'm like, uh, she's gonna melt. Yeah. <laughs> she's gonna melt. She doesn't get it. Sub ten is when you're stupid with that amount of. She's confidence. about to right, right, cook right. herself. She's like, it's so easy. <laughs> she's gonna be like a hot dog. She's gonna cook. Yeah. <laughs> and I will have warned her. It's me. This is on me. I told her, and she didn't listen. It was right around. See what happened to my mom? I, she boiled herself. <laughs> it was also right around when I saw Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and uh, at the end when he goes into the vat, and I'm thinking like, that's a vat. Oh, <laughs> she's vatting. She's gonna vat. She's not gonna make it. <laughs> oh no, that's fatal. Yeah, man. Sub ten. Why is she doing this? Was I not a good enough son? <laughs> Don't go, Mom. Don't, no. My fault. I'll do better. Don't hot dog. I'll read daily. <laughs> don't don't hot dog, please. <laughs> I uh, yeah. What sub ten is? Why is it so easy to convince yourself of stuff that is just so illogical? Because I, people are constantly lying to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, honestly, uh, yeah, that's valid. You are you are being lied to all the time by almost everyone. With any authority, that's why. I think that's why kids believe unbelievable things is because we tell them that those things are true. Yeah, yeah. For a long time. And then one day we're just like, JK, 
Yeah, right. I was just Jay kidding about half of that, and you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah. But now let's have a beer, and that's why I think there's people have a lot of parent issues too. They're like, why'd you lie all the time? Right. Why'd you tell me all that stuff that wasn't true? Like I, now I'm feel like an idiot. Yeah. That's why I'm not down with lying to kids, and yeah. that's why I have to watch myself around both my kids and other people's kids because I am not into telling them stuff that's not. Got, even true if not helpful i, I try to that's why i'm like call me if you get arrested i'll tell you the real deal it too helps many, too many times i think in a lot of kids and in a lot of youth i know it was for me when you're told one thing so much you believe it and then there's that that one rascal kid at the back of the bus that <laughs> that knows stuff that knows what it is right that's not how it works <laughs> and then now you're the one just looking Duh. Do you remember the first time you really locked eyes with a kid that was like that and you were like, you know things. You've got a stepdad. You know, you do. You've you have grandparents that let you watch other channels. Mm -hmm. You have some source that. of knowledge that has clued you in. You're yep. a I definitely yeah. had one of those. Uh, how old were you? Uh let's see. There's always that cool kid, and the whole reason why they 10. were cool is because they yeah, just, sub ten, definitely sub, sub 10. ten. Yeah, they yeah. Just knew a bunch of stuff. <laughs> they just knew, and that kid gets more interesting as time goes on. Yeah, in in like middle school, that kid knows some real stuff. That kid showed me Jerry Springer videos, like when I was a kid. Like, yeah, you know, it was like that was when they were like, you know, these these were the tapes. Yeah, so they weren't. Yeah, yeah, those are they weren't someone censored. Bought them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were a is fan. It, yeah, he showed me them, and then he showed me like corn. Like we we're listening to corn, and I was like, "Dude, this guy's." <laughs> I thought you meant. I was like, "Why? Well, <laughs> you never had corn before?" <laughs> he showed me cream style corn. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know corn could do that. He showed me corn at the cop. This kid <laughs> had. This kid's corn had no limits. <laughs> he put. He, he showed me tyene and cojita cheese on corn. <laughs> this kid was in a street corn gang. He was a big street corn guy. <laughs> showed me how to cut it, <laughs> prepare it, boil it, steam it, butter it. Another celebrity, <laughs> another celebrity getting in trouble is Diddy. That makes me happy. That talk about trouble. That's yeah, deep yeah, trouble. I guess it's a downfall, but yeah, it doesn't yeah. even really feel like a downfall for some strange reason. Because he wasn't doing anything. He wasn't really currently. doing much outside I, of probably yeah. some he, like business ventures. He's a hip hop, you know, mogul. Hero, mogul. Like, he's big. I mean, it stinks. It's just another example of like one of my favorite artists just ended up being a monster, <laughs> and now I can't. <laughs> how, how many times has this happened? two times so far that i can think of right off the bat and i just can't enjoy their catalog anymore like i can't enjoy i have their so music. many okay you want to make a guess or do you know who the other one was for i i think i it's also for me it's, uh, same thing for you yeah yeah, yeah. it's r kelly yeah r, it's, it's r, r, that was the other time it's rk we can't say his name for monetization <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. but i okay. i yeah r r kelly yeah, there's man, a, so many bangers, so many bops, so many number I, one hits. And I like, yeah, this is how wild this is for me. When you can't even listen to the whole Space Jam soundtrack anymore. Oh, oh man, well, it sucks. Okay, <laughs> this is. I'll draw a line. This is gonna hurt. We Wait. might. This this is gonna be a room divider. You about to rip a gong? I'm about to rip a gong. Gong me. I still listen to I Believe I Can Fly, and I have come to grips with it, and I'm okay with it. Well, good for you, Ross. Yeah. And yeah. hear me out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is going to sound insane. <laughs> Isn't I do not. So uh, I, I don't have many great memories with like my brother and my father and myself. Like there's very, there's like a three or four moments that I remember all three of us hanging out. Right. And one of those moments was seeing Space Jam. And, and I was so proud as a kid. I was like, I told you that movie was going to be good. I told you. And everyone was like, oh, well, it was all right. I just remember that moment. And every time uh, I think about, I believe I can fly, I think about my brother, my father, myself walking out of Space Jam. And then 
years so later. You have like a core memory. I have a core memory it. attached to that movie and also that soundtrack and also that song. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was the last time you heard it. It still goes so hard. Yeah. When the choir comes in, I can fly. It's over. Goosebumps, <laughs> dude. Gets me every time. Gets me every time. And then, like, every time I listen to that song, I'm thinking about my dad. And I'm like, why? That's not. Life is chaos. R. Kelly yeah. did everything. And now, whenever I still listen to that, I still think about my dad. <laughs> that, that's, that's the impact dynamic he had. right there. Yeah. But that's not. I mean, you didn't. Whatever I when people put things out and they are in the mainstream and songs I mean talk about like Michael Jackson or I'm sorry Michael J yeah MJ <laughs> YouTube yeah. monetization yeah. you can't say MJ either yeah, you you can't say the other yeah, guys. yeah. MJ twenty oh, three um, <laughs> oh man their branding's all over the place <laughs> but like I, I grew up listening to all those songs and yep. then they're like hey he's a monster and I'm like well I didn't do anything wrong. I listen to all that. I can't delete that from. I can't reassign those memories to a different soundtrack of a better person. <laughs> right. Like I, I like watching Scotty Scheffler hit golf balls. I didn't know that he was a cop runner over. <laughs> <laughs> That's not on me. I'm not an accessory in any of these crimes. Yeah, I, I do. But I, do I remember key things in my childhood to, to songs of people who were awful to? Yeah. I don't. Uh, then all right. Wait, do you, so what, what do we do now? Do is does there have to be a screening process before you're allowed to make great songs? Yeah. Or yeah. Or, or are you going to give me a new song that kind of fits the tempo and vibe so that I can re remember <laughs> my childhood to those these people's music? What like do you? What am I supposed to do? Is what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? There's no rule. There's no rules, and I've always felt pretty awkward about how easy it is for me to disassociate. Uh. Celebr or like, have you ever done anything? People awful? who I've never met. You need to tell people listening to this right now, Ross. If you're a monster, I mean, <laughs> are you a monster? Because I'm not. I was an awful kid, and then I got in trouble, <laughs> and then I learned that that was basically it. I mean, if you judge me from when I was 13 years old, then I, I'm. I got kicked out of school. I was always getting referrals and ISS in school suspension and all that. Oh, dude, none of us are perfect. I've been um, I've been pulled over for burned out taillights a number of times. Yeah. <laughs> Rad. I need you to know that. Living on the edge. <laughs> if we can even still sing that song, what did he do? Yeah, yeah, right. I don't even know. I'm reluctant to like music at this point because like, I don't know who created it. Uh, David Bowie. David Bowie is like my number one. However, you're a Google away. Of getting your heart broken from David Bowie. Mm -hmm. What'd he do? He just, uh, there was definitely some uh, younger people uh, floating around in his earlier career. But if. Dude, you know what I just heard was that um, Seinfeld had like a teenage girlfriend oh, the whole that, time he was doing his show. And that was like. And everybody public. was just like, oh, yeah, no worries. That was public. I didn't. Yeah, I yeah. was not aware of that. Well, it was it was, I, if I remember correctly, I believe it was like in the media, known at that time. But this was and just what didn't he marry her? And, and then, uh, yeah, I, I just found this out like this week. Yeah, yeah, super young. Then, yeah, that they're not together for a really long time. It's it's weird. I don't know. Somebody, somebody at work was like, "Oh, you, yeah, but you know Seinfeld. You heard what he did?" And I was like, "The B movie." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. No. Hello. Hello. I think it, I just oh unaware of almost everything on purpose most of the time. It's way better to do that. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. I might I agree. I, I don't have to cancel anybody. I don't have. I don't even know about half the stuff. Right. Yeah. I just. I I'll cancel people that you know. I, at least that, that that's for. Should me. we cancel somebody? No. Let's do it right now. Right, just like, <laughs> like I said, none of why'd this leaves this you... room. Let's cancel Frico Nico. Yeah, why'd you look at me when you said that? I know you're not from Puerto Rico, but I, the more I hear, the more Frico you might be. The, I don't know. I just like... I Slick Nick? <laughs> celebrities, I've always... I, I am filled with a lot of apathy about their personal life. I just... It's not relevant. Yeah, I, it's not... I don't care. I just... Like, I'll... Yeah. There's a couple of Chris Brown songs that I'm like, oh, I just want to dance right now. No. Nope. And I still know what this this man went straight tennis backhand on Rihanna. Not I, cool. That's, yeah, it seemed it's not. It's not. I can't stop. Like, I still, those songs. Do you think they I'm should. I'm not a good person for it. I'm just being I'm probably a little too honest. You think yeah. judges should be able to be like, and you're 
all these songs have to be deleted. Oh, what if they did that? Right. What if that was oh, gong rip? Kind of seems like that way already. If you get convicted, they delete your catalog. <sighs> that is, that is like it just disappears. That's a slip. That is wild. It's no, not I, on anybody's phone. It's not on in any movie that it was in. It gets deleted and replaced. Even then, then that drives up like a weird black market. It would. It would draw. It would all of a sudden. R. Kelly is getting sold out of back alleyways. <laughs> yo, yo, I got that ignition remix. I, <laughs> I, I, you want to hear ignition remix again? But it would all. It would. It wouldn't <laughs> be on. Like it couldn't be on a digital. <laughs> they could track it. Yeah, yeah dude, that's so. Then, so that people would be going to go into jail for having copies of Thriller. I got, I got Chris Brown's "Look at Me Now" play. You want you want to hear Buster than Chris Brown again? I got season one of Seinfeld. <laughs> When it was still figuring out what it was, that's the you know. At first, I was like, "No, nah, we we can't do that." But now that if we started like selling canceled artists' products and songs as a black market as drug dealers, I'm starting to really get on board with this idea. It's a lot of fun. I think outside the box, guys. That's what I do. Yo, let me get a half eighth of R. Kelly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it would it would uh give me give me original puff daddy yeah give me, <laughs> give me bad boys and uh just like uh the original ignition too the side of original ignition give me and a it, copy of usual suspects <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i would say getting i've gotten definitely bummed out about celebrities i i just had the biggest heartbreak when it comes to someone famous this sounds so silly. I'm embarrassed by this. Okay. But uh, I w we all love sports on this podcast, and we try our best not to talk too many sports because not everybody's into sports. But it just always creeps back in. It always cre it'll creep back in. Scotty Scheffler getting arrested, by the way, is not a sports story. <laughs> Th that is... That's, that's an American tragedy. <laughs> I would say it's an underdog story. We needed this. Wait, he needed that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it so, it's so good for his brand, whether he likes it or not, and I'm here for it. Uh, but Jurgen Klopp, which is the manager of my favorite soccer team over in England, uh, Liverpool, it was his last game this past weekend, and I, I cried twice. I cried twice over my favorite coach leaving my favorite team, and I, I still am not always... I'm not a hundred percent okay with the fact that I cried over my man, uh, my favorite manager leaving my favorite. You cried team. twice over that, two more times than I've cried this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I shed, I shed two, two tear sessions. They weren't like I was bawling, but definitely you're one. To, you're one, trying to dig yourself out of this hole now. Go ahead and just live in it. I had one. You moment. wept like you blood curdling cried. <laughs> yeah, it, but. You felt broken. It made me walk away. How many events in your life do you walk away going like, okay, I need to reprioritize some things. <laughs> I, I yeah. need to change up. Yeah, because keep in mind, you cried. This? He's perfectly healthy. He's fine. Yeah. It's, it's just the end of a sports era. I've never cried over somebody basically retiring before. That's what sports does to you. You know, it a requirement. <laughs> it just, It just got me. You wept. Let's just say it. Well, what's, use the W word. You wept. What's the hardest you've ever... What's the biggest feeling that sports has ever given you? Mm. What's the... I definitely have one. Which is? So my dad took me to a Jags game when I was... This was probably sub-13. I would say it's anywhere <laughs> like... Sub-13. Post-10, sub-13. <laughs> Whoa, okay. what a sweet spot. Somewhere in one of those. Dad. And, uh, <laughs> that's voice crack. Go to a... Texans Jags game it's freezing cold and we get beat like 26 to 0 we can't move the ball we just three and out the whole game it was just so sad and Byron you were in left which yeah <laughs> you're like this is the prime this is it <laughs> I remember this I, is bad Jags football and I'm here for it <laughs> I remember I sipped uh a little sip of my dad's beer to Ooh, try it. Yes. And I remember thinking it was my fault that we lost that bad because I because I, I sipped the beer. Because God was watching. We, <laughs> yes. God was like, oh, underage drinking? How about this? I'll make your team bad for 10 years. <laughs> Dude, I think it is actually your fault. We just figured it out. Oh, I bet you the 
<laughs> what was it? Was it a twelve dollar Bud Light? McUltra, baby, all day. McUltra, baby. Did you sneak it? <laughs> I did. Yeah, I was like uh, get dressed. It was in a cup. I just remember being in a cup, and I was like, "Wow, that's beer." And then I tried it. The I was over. I was mooching off of a very cool Italian family throughout my entire like middle school and high school. And then they would give me the Muccinis, uh, the, <laughs> the Campo Bassos, mm-hmm. Fosso Azzurri. And uh, what? they would they would give us peach soaked wines, <laughs> wine soaked peaches is what mm-hmm. is is the correct way of that statement. Was this sub 13? It was like sub sub 15, sub 15, sub 15, sub 14. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, give or take eighth ninth grade yeah but that 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 was i think one of the first times i ever like tasted it how old are you right now 34 sub 35 sub 30, i'm sub 35 sub 35 dawson asked me yesterday if you were older than me hell yeah i was like what i think he was yeah. trying to soak me up so he could have a sneaky sip on my beer yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just trying to butter me up it's it's I'm trying to butter beer me. For, for <laughs> I don't. I think I was I, like, no, Ross is like 10 years younger than me. I was yeah. wrong, though. I didn't know. I was like, I don't know. I was at his 30th birthday, and it was a long time ago. So I know he's in his 30s. Age, he goes, age, how do you not know how old he is? I go, only kids know how old people are. Yeah, yeah. Age, I don't care how old Ross is. Age kind of goes out the window at a certain point. He's like, and then he goes, how old are you? Like, I was like, you don't know how old I am? I was like, I'm 41 Savage, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I just, it just, it just hit me when you guys said sub 35. That 35 is kind of a big deal, right? 35. No, I, well, no well, nothing is like, a big deal. Once you're old enough to rent a car, nothing matters. Well, I like society always tells me when we always celebrate like five year. I've always thought this was weird, by the way. I've never understood like. 35 year anniversary, 40 year anniversary of what is what I'm thinking, like. Just, Work, marriage, like who, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they always celebrate five year increments and ten year increments. They do, but it's just to keep you from quitting. Anything you're celebrating the anniversary of, it's just to keep you from quitting doing that. Just getting, yeah, thirty five. I it just hit me that my birthday is like in two months. Completely forgot. I'm. It is cool knowing though that birthdays just stop like having meaning. I, I'm. I, it would be weird though to be like having party hats at 35 and like getting action figures and getting the pointy ones, the pointy hats. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, dude, I remember I went to a birthday party. I gave a kid a, a birthday present and he gave it back to me. Dirty low blow. Gave it back. Like, I don't want that. I don't want it. He regifted. Oh, like right then and there, right then and there straight return. Uh, Try t- again. Or I just, I don't need a present if this is what it is. Uh, I don't need a present if this is what it is. What did you give him? It was just an action figure. It was cool. It was, uh, I think it was uh, Batman. He didn't like that one? How old he was this like kid? Uh, we were in elementary school, third, fourth grade. Sub 10? So, uh, yeah, sub 10. Third, fourth grade, sub-ten. that's like eight, nine, nine years old. She's getting... That's upper single digits. I was gutted. That's messed up, though. And he wouldn't take an action figure? No. He just wanted V-Bucks? That doesn't he, add up. Yeah, He was... <laughs> I, I'll tell you this. It's is just that, want money now. They're like, do you have Apple Cash? I don't need this. Thank you, though. I'm not saying that this is because he was an only child, because there's plenty of only childs that are super dope and super cool, but he plenty. was the stereotypical, like, all the isms that people have felt about. Then I would think he would want an action figure just to have someone to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> He was just not. I'm looking for friends. I don't care if they're plastic. Yeah, yeah. He was not the best uh, with with the other kids. And what do you think you wanted? I don't. So uh, maybe he was Look. just not. Maybe he was a Superman guy, and I got him Batman. Yeah, maybe he was like Marvel. Yeah, he's like screw this. Like, I'm not really a DC, DC kid, Ross. Yeah, I don't know. Birthday parties though. Oh, I want to. Maybe time. we should. We have uh, very close to each other birthdays. Yeah. Maybe we should have a little kid birthday party. We should go to Charles Elias Cheese and just... Charles, Charles <laughs> Elias, Elias Cheese. I like how this is. Is well, that, You know they have beer that, and Is that wine. how he writes his checks? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. He's not chucking it. No, He's no. He's not a Scotty. Those no. things are still a thing. Chuck E. Cheese is still... Yeah, dude, still you can going. go to one. I, I took When my kids were little, we go, but they have wine on tap. 
And depending on what What? 16-year-old is working there, they'll give you a beer cup of, like, (laughs) straight Merlot. What you can't do that. I got... I had to be driven home from a Charles Elias cheese one time. <laughs> Yo, one of my favorite. Uh, I was like, let's let's just play. Let's do more uh, skee ball till we're good. And they're like, no, you need to. Like, it's closed. <laughs> uh, what, what am I? There's no more skee ball tonight, Joel. <laughs> it, it made me laugh so hard. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese got in a little bit of trouble when they like opened up like a ghost kitchen, essentially within Chuck E. Cheese. So you could get good. Good, so, like, uh, different kinds of food? No, what it was is that they... <laughs> I didn't mean to knock the culinary. I was like, you could get good food there? <laughs> <laughs> no, what they did was they were like, sorry, all right, so, sorry, G- sorry, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> sorry, uh, Charles. <laughs> sorry, Charles. They realized that, like, man, all right, Chuck E. Cheese is on Uber Eats, but no one's ordering our Chuck E. Cheese food through Uber <laughs> you, Eats. You can't order Pac-Man to your house. <laughs> so they, well, so they went ahead, like, no one's ordering our pizza through Uber Eats. Let's just call it, like... Antonio's <laughs> and just they just put their name up as like some like stereotypical <laughs> Italian <laughs> male name and they were just slanging pizzas for a while and yes. then finally they they got found out they got found out was like, that is awesome <laughs> yeah that's an, I did not, not know about at, this I'm yeah not, I'm even mad at that. that that wasn't countrywide or anything but that was one but one of them cheese that I believe was also in Florida of course but yeah, that's, that's a straight up. Uh, that's a Chuck E. Cheese move, dude. Yeah. Are really? you telling me that the businessman, the, the the business that has a mascot that has a straight up rat? Yeah, rat's a rat pizza move. If <laughs> I ever a heard rat one, pizza move, dude. They're like, people aren't wanting this rat pizza because it's rat pizza. <laughs> yeah, but if don't... we unbrand this rat pizza, I can sling it all night. Yeah, hear me out here. Let's take the rat out of the image <laughs> on our pizza. <laughs> and also, super not a mouse. That's a rat. <laughs> that is a girthy it never... rat. <laughs> that is a girthy rat, dude. That rat needs... He's looking like he's not during a drug problem, but I think Chuck E. Cheese just got out of a hard patch in his life. Chuck E. Cheese needs these gigs. Yeah, <laughs> dude, he's got. You know how many rat kids? That he's stage got? time is paying child support. Yeah, yeah. Look at, look at Chuck E. Cheese, dude. He has, he kind of has like a peaked in high school vibe. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese looks like he takes his mom's painkillers. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese looks like he could. Chuck E. Cheese looks like he will walk up to you and be like, "I bet you I could throw this football over the mountains." Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Throw God. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese can chuck a Nerf football at least half a mile. Chuck E. Cheese, he's super charming. He's very charismatic all throughout middle school. He makes all the friends. Ninth grade happens. He makes JV. He doesn't even... <laughs> he goes past freshman yeah. football. He goes straight to JV. All of a sudden, sophomore year hits. He's playing varsity. Senior year happens. He's prom king. He's, he, he's one of the first rats in, in his school. To lose his rat virginity, he yeah. w- he wins prom king. He graduates, rat prom king, rat prom king. <laughs> he graduates, then all of he a gets a he gets a scholarship, but it's to like it's uh, like JUCO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's junior college. Uh, he's, he's got it's a division seven. Yeah, and he's playing backup running back. He realizes that all of his work isn't really for much he's failing statistics so he gets he loses a scholarship he gets a dui he gets a dui his rat college roommate goes man you gotta just smoke this he thinks it's weed pcp fails a drug test at the job he has loses his work study yeah chuck e cheese thinks like oh man all i want to do now is just get wet that's all I want to do. I just want to smoke PC. His rat girlfriend breaks up with him because she says he's hopeless. Yeah, he goes, what about my rat children? What are you going to know? Delilah, no. He has a six-month-old rat baby named Delilah. Mm-hmm. But that, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's his girlfriend's name, too. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Delilah the second. And he goes like... D squared. Uh, just... <laughs> but I'm trying my best. And then wife... Wife, rat wife is like, nah. I'm out. Listen, listen here, Chuck. I'm out. He's like, call me Charles. She's like, no one will ever call you Charles because you don't deserve it, Chuck. Boom. Rock bottom. Heroin. But then out of nowhere, his uncle passes away, unfortunately, leaves him a chain restaurant. Yeah. And he's like, 
in the will it says you can play your band can play here just please keep making this pizza, pizza. to this recipe <laughs> yeah yeah it's important never change it <laughs> never you can change the name if if uber eats becomes a thing you can change the name to antonio's <laughs> but other than that don't change the pizza and yeah. ball pits and always and, yeah ball pits. And, and and ball pits god the, i i think those ball pits are aren't they known to be like some of the most disgusting things on the planet i don't think it has to be confirmed with science I know it is. What? Yeah. What sick person was like, oh, we got to cotton swab these ball pits. <laughs> you don't want to cotton swab those balls. How do you <laughs> clean those ball pits? You just spray a bunch you, of. You don't. You I don't set them on fire and you start over. I, yeah. I think you just buy new ones. Just I don't, like every episode of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Burn it to the ground and we'll build a new one next week. Well, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. That's episode six. Night, night. Bye. Bye. This episode and every episode is brought to you by Attorney Mo DeWitt. If it's a slip and fall, guess what? Call Mo DeWitt. Just call Mo.com. You won't regret it. There's no attorney like Mo DeWitt in Central Florida, and I am a shining example of that. He's a huge supporter of the arts and everything local, anything Central Florida. He supports us. Please support him. Injured on the go? Just, Just call, call Mo. Mo. Just call Mo.com.